Hello, this is Babe Salma Callas once again. And this week, I'm going to talk to you about confession. And like my video last week on daily prayer, this video contains excerpts from Rediscovering Catholicism by Matthew Kelly. Both Michael Jordan and Tiger Woods have an incredible ability to look at their game and identify both their strengths and their weaknesses. Once they have done this, they work tirelessly to make their strengths impenetrable and transform their weaknesses into strengths. For so many years, the champions of Christianity, the men and women we call saints, have been going into the classroom of silence, taking a humble and honest look at themselves and assessing their own strengths and weaknesses. Then, armed with this knowledge, they bravely set forth to transform their weaknesses into strengths, their vices into virtues. They did not reflect on their bas basketball game or, or their golf swing. They reflected on their character. Now, what are your weaknesses? Do you know? Most people don't want to know. We don't want to think about our weaknesses. We don't want to talk about them. And we certainly don't want anyone else to point them out. This is a classic sign of mediocrity, and unfortunately, this mediocrity has a firm grip on the church and humanity at this moment in history. The proof is our collective attitude and approach toward confession, and most people's inability or unwillingness to admit when they are wrong and then apologize. Great men and women want to know their weaknesses. They see those weaknesses as the key to a richer, more abundant future. Wouldn't you rather have God deal with your weaknesses in private than have them dealt with in public? Your weaknesses are the key to the unimaginable bigger future that God has envisioned for you. Your strengths are probably already bearing all the fruit they can. They will continue to bear those good fruits in your life. But at some point, they will begin to plateau. Your richer, more abundant future is intimately linked to your weaknesses. If we are honest with ourselves, if we can stomach a moment of truth, if we are, giving, if we are willing to give truth a place in our lives above all our excuses and justifications, I think each of us discovers for ourselves that we need to turn back to God. We often turn away from God, sometimes in small ways, just for a moment, and at other times in much larger ways. Turning our backs on God is an inner action. It is quite possible for people to turn their backs on God and still go to church every Sunday. The external actions don't guarantee the internal disposition. Have you turned your back on God? Very few people turn their backs to God completely. Most of us just turn our backs on Him in one or two areas of our lives. In what area of your life have you turned your back on God? In my personal journey, confession has played a very powerful role, helping me to strive to become the best version of myself. I find confession to be a humbling experience, but not a humiliating one. While any spiritual exercise can be helpful in our journey, I find regular confession to be a particularly powerful tool. When I close my eyes in prayer, I see the person I am and the best version of myself side by side, and I am challenged to change. This is what takes place in confession. So we prepare by asking ourselves some soul-searching questions in an examination of conscience. Those questions give birth to the dual version of the person we are at this moment and the person we are capable of becoming. We then bring our faults, failings, and flaws to God. Through this process, we, op we open ourselves up to God and the mysterious gift of grace. This grace often takes the form of a stronger desire to become a better version of ourselves. There are, of course, some common objections to the practice of confession. The secular culture propagates the myth that there is no such thing as sin or evil, no objective truth, and no universal right and wrong. 
They tell us that these are just ideas the church invented to control and manipulate people. I assure you, sin and evil are real. This truth should require no proof or explanation. If you feel it does, turn on your television tonight and watch the evening news or take a casual walk through history. The catch cry of modern Christians has become, I don't need to confess my sins to a priest. I can confess them straight to God. You can do anything you want. That is the nature of the freedom with which God endows us. But if you are serious about being Christian, then it follows then that you are serious about seeking and doing the will of God. The tradition of confession is deeply rooted in the life and teachings of Jesus, as seen in the Gospels. I have often wondered how non-Catholic Christians are able to ignore or explain away some of these central passages. For example, John's account of Pentecost. Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I am sending you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. This passage is taken from John chapter 20, verses 21 to 23. But perhaps the biggest danger with the direct-to-God approach is that it becomes all too easy to deceive ourselves, and then we begin to create God in our image. When it is just me and God, it is, it is all too easy to project my own qualities and biases upon God. We begin to create God in our own fallen image. There are two truths of self-knowledge for us to consider here. The first is that as human beings, we all have an incredible ability to deceive ourselves. And the second is that we almost never see things as they really are. Among Catholics who still hold a place for confession in their spiritual life, there are some who consider the practice necessary only in the case of serious sin, according to the minimum obligation set out in the canon law. But let us take as our example a relationship between a husband and a wife. Would it be good for their marriage if they never apologized to each other for anything? Would it be healthy for a relationship if a husband and wife apologize only for serious offenses? How healthy would your key relationships be if you never apologize? I would suggest that they would not be healthy at all. Rather, they would be massively dysfunctional and woefully inadequate. We all have a spiritual disease. We all have sins. Some people like to pretend that they don't. But over time, their sins spread through their lives like cancer in the body. Like cancer, if our sin is not addressed and arrested, in the end, it will devour us. Other people try to justify their sins with all types of explanations, none of which will ever satisfy their own hearts. Then there are those who go to experts with the hope that such people will help them overcome their troubled consciences. The truth is, I do things every day that are contrary to the ways of God, things that stop me from being the best, the best version of myself. And so do you every day. Then we carry all this baggage around with us and it affects us in ways that we are often not even aware of. Our sins affect us physically, emotionally, intellectually, spiritually, and psychologically. They affect our relationships, our work, our health, our intellectual clarity, and our ability to genuinely embrace and experience all of life. But if you want peace in your heart, I want to personally invite you to come to confession. There is no treasure in life like a clear conscience. If you want the joy of a clear conscience, come to confession. A proud artist doesn't notice the defect in her style. The proud man doesn't notice the weakness in his character. The proud must content themselves with mediocrity. Excellence belongs to the humble. Humble yourself to know who you really are, and God will respond by revealing the incredible person you are capable of becoming. 
the mystery of grace can never be adequately described by cold words on cold pages. It must be experience. So if you haven't been to confession for a while, maybe now is your time. Perhaps it has been 10 years or 20 years, maybe even longer. Jesus says to you, do not be afraid. Bring the sins of your life and place them at the feet of Jesus in the sacrament of reconciliation. Do not think of it as confessing your sins to a priest. Think of it as confessing your sins to God, your Heavenly Father. I assure you, if you approach this sacrament with a sincere and humble heart, you will experience the flow of grace in your life. Listen to those words of absolution. By the ministry of the church, may God grant you pardon and peace. And I absolve you from all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. As the priest speaks those words, the floodgates of grace are opened and your soul will be filled with a deep peace. You will experience an inexplicable lightness and an intoxicating sense of joy and liberation. Confession is a gift. Behold the gift. Embrace the treasure. Thank you for watching this video.